What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna work through how to evaluate functions. Now we're gonna go ahead and do that by working through 10 different examples. And we're going to explore certain functions such as the linear function, the quadratic function, absolute value function, as well as the square root function and rational function. And we're not just gonna focus on evaluating functions with numbers, we're also gonna look into like variable expressions. So after going through these examples, you're gonna get a good mix of how you can evaluate as well as simplify an expression. I hope you enjoy. What we have is we have a function, f of x equals three x plus two. Remember a function is a relationship. It's a relationship between our input, which is our x, and our output, which is f of x. The relationship is multiply by three, add two. So we say the relationship of the function, by the name of its f, at x, at the value of x, is three times x plus two. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the value of my relationship at four. So to do that, I am going to plug in a four in for my x. So I'll say f of four equals three times four plus two. Well, three times four is 12. 12 plus two is 14. So I say the value of my function at four is equal to 14. The next one, f of 2 thirds. Now, f of 2 thirds, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to plug in a 2 thirds in for x. Now, a lot of you probably forgot how to do this, right? How do you multiply a whole number times a fraction? Change your whole number to a fraction. Okay? Here, you can do this a couple ways. You could say, I'm multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3, they cancel out. Or you can just say 3 times 2 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Either way you want to look at it, your answer should give you 2 plus 2. So you can say f of 2 thirds equals 4. Okay? 3 times 2 thirds is equal to 2. Then plus 2 is 4. Last one is that now it says evaluate the function for f of a plus 1. Crap, there's two numbers in that one, right? It's okay, just follow the exact same steps. F of a plus one equals three times a plus one plus two. Now, what do I do here? It was easy when it was one number, right? You multiply three times four. Well, what do you do when you multiply three times a binomial, a term with, or parenthesis with two terms? You multiply the three times a and the three times the one. So three times a, we represent as three a. Three times one is three, plus two. I can now simplify these two terms. So I can say f of a plus one is equal to three a plus five. Does that make sense a little bit? Yeah, no, no, no. That's awesome. That's it. All right, um, what I want to do is show you how to evaluate uh, f of 2c for the function f of x equals negative 4x plus 6. So remember, when we're doing a problem like this, a function, what it's, you know, a function says is, f is just the name, so it says f, a function of x, is equal to negative 4x plus 6. So what they're saying is when you plug in x, or the value of my function at x, is at this point negative 4x plus 6. So that is like the relationship of the function. So what we're asking is, I want to find the value of my function f at 2c. So therefore, what I'm going to have to do to evaluate this, to find that value, I'm going to have to plug in 2c in for wherever I see my x. So therefore, I just do negative 4 times 2c plus 6. Then, here I can multiply this through. So I get negative 4 times 2c is a negative 8c plus 6. I can't combine any terms any further. So therefore, that is going to be my final answer. So I can write f of 2c equals a negative 8c plus 6. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that we've covered at uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, we talked about evaluating functions. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, if we have a function, um, uh, oftentimes we want to find the value of the function at certain intervals. So in this example, our function is the absolute value of 3x minus 1 plus 2. And I want to find the value of my function at the interval of negative 3. So if you guys remember what we did at the beginning of class, all I'm simply going to do is enter in negative 3 in for x, my input value. 
right? Yes, somewhat familiar. So therefore, this would be three. I'll make sure I use parentheses. So basically what we're doing, which we're going to be using over and over, is we're plugging in our value. Whatever value is our input, we're plugging that into our equation. Then we do negative, uh, negative 3 times 3, which is negative 9. Minus 1 is negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. Positive 10 plus 2 is equal to 12. That means our function at the value of negative 3 is equal to 12. Okay. <coughs> OK, so how do we evaluate, right? How are you going to evaluate a function? So remember, there's a couple things that we need to remember about a function. First of all, it says f of x equals, I don't know, 3x minus 1, all right? Remember, f of x is you're going to be your name. x is going to be your, f is the, function, is the name of your function. x is going to be the value of your input that you're going to plug into your function. And 3 of x is going to be the value of your function at your input, or a lot of times what we also call the rule, or our output. So when given these two functions, what they're saying is I have a function named f, and I should actually call this something different, right? I should call this g. So because the name of f is x squared minus 1. So the value of f at x is equal to x squared minus 1, which is the rule. But if I want to find the value of the function not at x, but at negative 3, that means I need to plug in negative 3 where there was an x. Therefore, negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. So I can say the value of my function f at negative 3 is equal to 8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for g of x, g of x says the value of g of x is equal to x plus 2x minus 1. Now, it doesn't matter what I'm evaluating for. I still want to evaluate for x minus 1. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I can combine these two terms so I can get 3x minus 1. Then again, I want to find the value of g for x minus 1, not x. So rather than plugging in an x, I'm now going to plug in a 3 times x minus 1. Therefore, distributive property. I get 3x minus 4. So that means the value of g of x minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 4. All right, where the value of g of x is equal to, well, really 3x minus 1 or x plus 2x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you evaluate a function. Hope it helped. Thanks. All right, so in this example, ladies and gentlemen, um, basically all we're simply going to do is replace, the, our, imp, replace our input value into our function and exactly in for our rule. So if we want to evaluate for f of negative 2, if we're going to change our input value from x to negative 2, then in our rule, we're basically going to replace every single time we see an x with our value negative 2. So it's going to be 3 times negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 2. Negative 2 squared is, is 4. 4 times 3 is going to be 12. Negative 4 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 8, and then plus 2. Therefore, we can say f of negative 2 is going to equal 22. Input is negative 2. Output is 22. Okay, I'm going to stress this because it's going to become very important here um, coming up. To do f of 0, we just apply basically the, the same technique again. 3 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 2. Well, 0 squared is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. Negative 4 times 0 is going to be 0, and then plus 2. Input, output, input, output. And we'll do the last one. 3 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 squared, wait a minute, that's positive 1. Thank you. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and then plus 2. So therefore, that's going to equal a positive 1. Input, output, input, output. Yes, question? 
the original problem was f of 1. I didn't change it there. But I wanted you to do f of 1. Hi, I'd like to show you how to evaluate a function. Given a function f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 2 for f of negative 1 and f of 1 third. Remember, when we're trying to evaluate a function, what we're representing is, remember, our x is our input variable, all right? And our function is going to be what we input, and then you're going to get an output. So x is going to be our input variable. So if I say, if I want to solve for f of 1, f of negative 1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to input that negative 1 into my function wherever I see the x. So therefore, I'll write f a negative 1 would equal 3 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 2. Therefore, you can notice this negative 1 has now replaced every spot where I had the x in my original function. Now, from here, it's just a symbol of uh, simplifying uh, this equation. So, I have everyone equals negative 1 squared and comes to positive 1 times 3 plus 2 plus 2. F of negative 1 equals 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Then, now let's say I want to input a different variable. So therefore, now I'm going to get a, hopefully, a, I'm going to get a different value because it is a function. Uh, I'll get a different value. So F of 1 third is going to be equals 3 times one third squared minus two times one third plus two. And actually just describe myself. You won't necessarily always get a different term. However, this f of negative one, since it's a function, if you guys remember, this f of negative one, seven is my unique answer. I cannot have a separate answer for f of negative one. Therefore, it won't be a function, right? Remember when we went over functions? If you have your input, if you have two different outputs, it's not a function. So why theoretically I still could get a seven, I can't get a different answer when I input negative one. Same thing, I can't, I can't get a different answer if I, when I put in one third. I will only get one unique answer because it's a function. So one third squared, f one third equals three times one ninth minus two thirds plus two. Three times one third is gonna be one third minus, um, one third minus two thirds will become a negative one third plus two. F one third equals one and two thirds. All right. So to remember how to evaluate a function, um, what you need to do is just take whatever your input variable is and plug it in for your given variable into your function, and then simplify mathematically as given. So that's how you evaluate a function. All right. Uh, what I what I want to explain to you guys is go back over. Um, we're going to look at a function relationship, and I just want to kind of re-explain and remember what exactly are the parts of a function. So remember, this is our name, and that's pretty much the value. T is going to be the value that we're going to evaluate it at, and this is pretty much our function relationship, or what's going to be pretty much the value or the total value at that um, value t. So what we want to do is we want to find um, what we want to do is we want to find what is the we want to evaluate the function at our certain value. So when we evaluate the function at t, it's just going to give us this expression. But what they have is our two problems is they want to say what is the function h? What is the value of function h at two? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of our t's with twos. So you say, my function h at 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 2 times 2. And I'm going to put parentheses around the 2's to, let you, to remind you that I've put those, substituted those in for the t's. So then here, it's just a simple evaluation. 2 squared gives you 4, minus 2 times 2 is 4. So therefore, the function h at value 2 is zero. Now the next thing is they say, all right, well, what is the function, what is function h when you evaluate it at x plus 2? So the exact same thing I did with 2, now I'm just going to use um, the binomial x plus 2. So I say h of x plus 2 equals x plus 2 
squared minus 2 times x plus 2. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, I, again, I have to go ahead and evaluate this. So I have to do x plus 2 squared, which is going to yield me x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then I have negative 2 times x and negative 2 times 2, which is going to give me a negative 2x times negative 4. Then I can combine my like terms. What I obtain is x squared minus, I'm sorry, plus 2x and then minus 0. So h, h of x plus 2 equals x squared plus 2x. So you just need to make sure that uh, whatever you're trying to find the value of, you just plug that in, in for your variable up there. So that's how you uh, evaluate a function relationship. So basically like I showed you guys in this example here, if I have the function f of x equals the square root of 3 minus x squared, if I want to evaluate for, I'll use some color coding, if I want to evaluate for f of negative 2, what I am basically going to do is replace all of my input variables of my, in my rule with negative 2. So therefore, that's going to turn into the square root of 3 minus negative 2 squared. Okay, I'm putting negative 2 in parentheses to remind you that it's negative 2 squared. It's not 2 squared times negative 1. So negative 2 squared is what? 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. In the real number system, can we take the square root of negative 1? No. no. We'd have to go to the imaginary number system, right? Um, so um, I'm just going to write in no real solution. Yes? Um, yes, but for right now, I'm not going to be worried about i's because we'll get to that. But i would definitely be acceptable. But I'm just going to focus on the real number system for today. So now let's go ahead and do f of 0. Again, wherever we see an x, now we're just replacing all of our x's with zeros. So therefore, this would be 3 minus 0 squared. Well, 0 squared is 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. So the value of my function at 0 is the square root of 3. Okay? Do not simplify. Well, do not, I'm sorry, do not simply, you can't simplify. Do not try to um, approximate that. And then let's do f of 1. So if I was going to replace 1 in here, that would be the square root of 3 minus 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. 3 minus 1 is, um, no, yeah, 3 minus 1 is going to be 2, so it would be the square root of 2. Boom, done. So if I, have, if I have f of x equals 5 divided by 1 minus x, and I want to evaluate for these three values, you basically just replace your x in your rule with all three of these values. So if I was going to do f of negative 2, that equals 5 divided by 1 minus negative 2. 1 minus negative 2, right? It's 1 minus x. What is x? x is negative 2. So it's 1 minus negative 2. 1 minus negative 2 is going to be a positive 3. So that equals 5 thirds. So f of 0. f of 0 is 5 over 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. Last example, f of 1. 5 divided by 1 minus 1 equals 5 over 0. Ladies and gentlemen, can 0 divide into any number? No, so this would be undefined or no solution. OK? So for in this one, ladies and gentlemen, basically all we're going to be doing is practicing the valuing for f of negative 2, f of 0, and f of 1. So all you're simply going to do is, depending on what your new input value is, you're going to plug that input over to the rule to determine the output. So I have negative 2 squared minus 3 over negative 2. Negative 2 squared is equal to 4 minus 3 divided by negative 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 divided by negative 2 is going to be a negative 1 half.
Okay, so basically we could say f of f of negative two is equal to negative one half. All right. If we have f of zero, you're going to have zero squared minus three divided by zero. Now we're going to talk about this a little bit more extensively in class um, today. However, we cannot divide zero into anything, so therefore this would be undefined. Or you could say, you know, yeah, you can't define the solution to that. And then let's do f of 1. So in this one, you'd have 1 squared minus 3 divided by 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2 over 1, which equals negative 2. Now, one thing I just want to mention, guys, we're plugging in, you know, here's originally for x. We're evaluating for numbers. But just remember, this could be anything. This could be another letter. This could be an expression. Or this could be another variable, or it could even be another function. We'll learn about that stuff later. But just remember, the idea of whatever, this, whatever your input is, you plug it into your input of your rule, like that process, we're going to be doing that. But it's going to get a little bit more like crazier later. So just remember the process. Hopefully